Welcome aboard and thanks for joining me here on the Bonnie Lee, a Boston Whaler 250 Outrage in beautiful South Florida at Riviera Beach and Peanut Island. My name is Matt and after quitting my job during the pandemic, I found a new adventure right here on the water where among other things, I'll be discussing the ebbs and flows of life, boating, and business. So be sure to follow my page and drop me a comment below if there are things that you would like to see and discuss so I know to keep bringing you more. In the meantime, we've got plenty to cover, so let's get after it. All right, let's talk about safety. There are two very critical pieces of safety equipment that everybody should have and everybody should be using and unfortunately I very rarely see it happening and put into practice. So first and foremost, one of the most important pieces of safety equipment that you can have on the boat and are required to have on the boat is an appropriately sized PFD or personal flotation device for everybody on board. As you can see and you'll see in most of my videos, I am wearing a hydrostatic uh, it's an automatic inflatable life vest. So similar to what you would see on the commercial airlines where you put the uh, life jacket over your vest and you pull the cord and it inflates, this essentially does the same thing. This one here is made by Mustang. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, an inflatable life jacket. So I do have a pull cord down here on the bottom. I can manually release it. And then also contained inside here is a CO2 cartridge and the, the hydrostatic release. So if I go overboard and on the way out of the boat, maybe I knocked my head or I, I hit the water funny and I'm unconscious, this vest is gonna automatically deploy uh, and bring me back to the surface so that I can uh, either be self-rescued or somebody else can come get me. Um, it's especially important that when you're by yourself Things on the water can go wrong and they can go wrong fast. And when you get into a situation, you may not have time to retrieve your life jackets that are up top or tucked away in your bow seats or down in the head compartment or wherever you keep them. There may not just be a, there may not be enough time to get your life vest on. So for me and coming from a bass fishing tournament background, one of the rules we had was anytime the main motor is running, you need to have your life vest on. Um, now these vests are really nice because they're pretty lightweight, they're breathable so my whole back is open, I'm not sweating, uh, and they're not cumbersome, they're not getting in the way, I still have full movement of my arms and my body, and it's really not that big of a bother to have it on uh, out here on the water. Now one of the things to note is, is if this is the only style life vest that you have, and there's no other life vest on the boat, you do have to wear this the entire time. Uh, so fortunately for me, I've got a bunch of life jackets up top here. I've got a couple life jackets in the head compartment, and I've got another couple life jackets up in the bow seating. So if I wanted to, I mean, I could take this off and not wear it, but just being safety conscious, it, it's not a bother, so I'm just gonna wear it. One of the other really key components to safety on your boat is your kill switch, your lanyard. If I can, I don't know if mine's long enough to pull up here, but yeah, I just pulled it out right now. So we're dead in the water. You can hear the alarms going off. So this lanyard right here, it plugs into a switch. Let's kill these alarms for just a second. Plugs into a switch down below and this would be hooked on to me this would be hooked on to the boat and in the event that i get knocked around this is going to pull tight and pop this pin shut the motors off and that way uh, you're not getting ran over or you have a boat that's taken off without a captain and we've all seen those videos where somebody didn't wear their kill switch and there's an out of control boat and a lot of times they end up crashing into somebody's dock up on the rocks into another boat or heaven forbid run over the captain that didn't have a kill switch on according to investigators the driver accidentally hit the throttle and was tossed into the water they say the boat kept going and hit two other occupied boats before hitting an empty boat that was docked nearby how that boat didn't cut up all those people in the water is just an act of god 
and police say one person did suffer a minor leg injury. That person was on one of the boats that was hit. In Boca Raton, Angela Rozier, WPBF 25 News. Okay, got the kill switch put back in. The motors are started back up. We've got the boat on autopilot heading over to another wreck location just to kind of see if there's any fish holding on it. And uh, if so, I'll mark it on the GPS. So one of the first things I added to this boat when I bought it was this really cool, uh, it's a really cool device. Let's just put it that way. If you go over to www.fellmarine.com, you can check out the two different products that they have. It is a wireless kill switch for your boat. And what it is basically, and it is US Coast Guard approved as a kill switch, so I still have my lanyard, which is active and working. But then I also have this little guy right here. This is a key fob, and it has a water sensor on it. And I clip that right here to my belt loop. I can run the boat without it. It doesn't have to be on or active, but you're, you'll get a couple little warning sounds saying you're not turned on. So as soon as I start the boat up, I'll get a couple little beeps uh, from the Fell Marine unit. And I simply just push the power button here and it connects to the system. And it also connects to my phone app, which it's not needed. You don't have to have it paired to your phone, but it does give you some extra options uh, to stay safe. So essentially what this does is it's got a proximity sensor in it. So if I, let's say I'm in the water and this is somehow still dry, if I get a certain distance away from the boat, it's gonna kill the motor. Or if I'm uh, docking the boat at a park and I walk out to the beach and I'm, you know, say 100 yards away from the boat, it's not gonna let the boat start up because it's also got an anti-theft system. Um, so unless this is on the boat, even with the key switches on and everything that's on the boat, you won't be able to start the boat and override the system. This also, if I go in the water, what it's gonna do is the moment that this thing ha uh, contacts the water, it's going to kill the motor. So if I fall overboard, it's gonna stop the motor dead in its tracks and it's gonna pop up on my uh, Mercury vessel view screen here that there was an emergency stop activated. The cool feature about that is if I'm the captain and there's other people on the boat and the captain goes overboard and it kills the motor, then what? Well, the cool feature about this is, is the boat is still able to be restarted by anybody still remaining on board. Simply put the boat back into neutral, fire back up the motors and come get me out of the water. The way that the app integrates into this is I've got emergency contacts uh, inputted into the app uh, that are on shore so that way if I go in the water they're going to get a notification that I'm in the water along with my GPS coordinates. Now I have mine set up to be 10 minutes in the water so that gives me enough time to get back on the boat and, and get the engine started up before that emergency message goes out to my shore base contacts and they start sending out the Coast Guard. The system also comes with uh, the optional passenger fobs. Uh, they don't kill the motor. Uh, you can't lock out the motors with the button and the, the anti-theft, but you can clip them onto you know, your dog or your small child or uh, somebody that you're concerned about on the boat if they go overboard. So what that does is if they go overboard, it's gonna give me an alarm message right here on my uh, GPS map uh, chart plotter screens that somebody went overboard and it's automatically going to put in a waypoint with their GPS location so we can circle back and go get them and we have a last known location in the event we have to hail the Coast Guard and let's hope that that never happens. So fellmarine.com, they have two systems. One is called the MOB, the Man Overboard System. That one is a little bit more labor intensive to hook up. You have to hardwire a couple things into your motors it does support multiple engines. The one I have is their newer version, which is the first mate kit. And the first mate kit I have is uh, for dual mercury motors. They have them for Yamaha and I'm sure a couple other brands. And that system was, it was completely plug and play. Uh, all I had to do was find a little mounting location for the box it comes with. There's an antenna that plugs into it. 
uh, that connects to the remotes or the fobs and it backbones right into the NEMA 2K system and then right where my ignition switches are uh, there's a T harness I unplug each one of my ignition harnesses slide the T connector in plug it all back in and it's done the installation of the system itself took me about 10 or 15 minutes in total uh, the hardest part was literally just taking all the panels off inside the head to get access to where all my wiring was that was the hardest part and then once everything's powered up and put into uh, put in the boat uh, you need to update the system and that's where that app really comes into play because you can update each one of the fobs and the the main brain box if you will it updates that as well so the updates took me about 45 minutes the install took about 15 minutes so it's a great product i highly recommend it that way you can wear your kill switch and be safe but you're not inconvenienced by being tethered to the helm so go check it out felmarine.com